Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Leo Li. Now, Leo Li is an artist based in Shanghai, China, and he has some pretty interesting um, looking work. Um, I do find his 2D paintings more fascinating just because that's kind of my thing. Um, although I still find his um, 3D stuff okay, you know. I, I think he mainly does use Blender for his um, 3D modeling and rendering. Um, but I believe he also does use 3D code from time to time. Um, but again, I'm going to focus more on this type of um, artwork just because, again, it's more of my thing. I'm more interested in developing my own 2D painting skills. And uh, visually speaking, it's more... Um, noticeable or notable i guess like it he has a very interesting style right um now this one's pretty different it's uh it's a bunch of compositions environment concept art this one does remind me a bit of john park right a bit just because of the uh, the composition like the big shapes the big strong silhouettes very very john parkish right i think and maybe a bit of Jordan Grimmer mix in there, right? Um, now this one's a pretty long post, or this specific post on ArtStation has a bunch of images on it, and it's just too many, right? But um, you can tell he does have a varied set of styles. Like, he's pretty versatile in that way, you know? Like, he's a legit concept artist, you know? Um, now this one's more opaque, right? Less opacity ish, kind of like, um, fuck. Because <laughs> most of his 2D paintings, the, the ones that I'm kind of focusing more on, they're kind of in the opacity side where you kind of, um, see a lot of the, the brush strokes underneath, where you basically have to kind of build up the painting. Um, but yeah, anyway, now, this one's kind of nice. It's a, it's for the TCAF convention in Toronto. Um, this was posted two years ago. Um, so, fuck. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but I do like this scene. It's, it's a keyframe of this... Um... Wait, he spelled his name with two E's. Laylee. But his profile spells it L-I. So, fuck. <laughs> Anyway, I do like I do like this scene just because it's very cute, romantic, kawaii, um, <laughs> forever alone, um, and yeah, it kind of reminds me of, uh, because I just watched, um, side note, I just watched uh, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, the, the thrice once upon thrice upon a time, fuck, <laughs> and I do like the ending scene, although. I wish they kissed, right? Go away. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, it's not. It's, this one's a bit more opaque, and again, it's more of a keyframe, right? It's um, it's not his typical style, I would say. It's more brushy, like a, a lot of big brush strokes involved here. I love the kind of graffiti of the, or for this kind of TCAF event thing. But uh, yeah. Anyway. Now, this one's a bunch of um, studies of his. Um, I do like this one. Lots of hues involved. Reds, blues, yellows. Very, very vibrant. Um, and I guess it's focusing more on keyframes. This could be like film stills. Right? Um, and again, look, look at this brushwork. Very, very simple. Not a lot of brush variety, I think. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, oh shit. I, there is a bit of brush variety. Um, but he likes to go for the, uh, I guess the round brush, usually. It's hard to see here just because he has, again, a bunch of different styles. Like this one, this one feels more like an editorial kind of um, illustration to me, right? Lots of big, strong shapes. Not very opacity-ish. It's very kind of straightforward, right? Raw. Um... Now, this one does remind me a bit of uh, Alexander Mandrajev, the, the keyframe illustrator, right? Um, oh, by the way, uh, 
Leo Lee has uh, like a bunch of videos on his YouTube channel that I find um, interesting and I'll be posting them or linking them in the description below and he has this one video where he kind of talks about the difference between concept art and illustration I, I actually find it kind of um, interesting right and thankfully he does have subs for that specific video because you know obviously it's like Chinese but um, I'm very glad he did post like the uh, the subs um, and it's, it's very useful and informative um, yeah anyway now this one does remind me a bit of shit Craig Mullins perhaps right just a bit um and maybe a bit of fuck <laughs> I forgot his name but uh, he's a cool cool artist as well I think um, I can't remember or recall his name, but he has the same, I guess the same kind of color palette, right? But maybe a bit of Victor Cloak's clue, right? Um, this one does remind me a bit of Derek Zabrocki, just based off of the architecture. Very, very cathedral-ish. Um, but the style, I think it's pretty close to um, Craig Mullins, I think. Just because of the brush variety being used, kind of like this one, right? Um, look at that. It's so pretty, right? It's, it's not just one solid shape. Like, there's so much texture texture, and uh, life in this painting, right? Now, this one's pretty cool. It's very sketchy, but it has that energy, that keyframe kind of feel. Um, and it feels very efficient when it comes to the brush strokes. Um, it kind of gets the point across and uh, the contrast on this character is pretty strong, right? Makes you see it immediately, right? Um, and of course the hues, the reds, the blues, the yellows. It's a pretty full kind of piece, right? It's not very boring to look at. Um, nice. Bloody. Keyframe, right? bunch of sketches I guess right um now this is more different right he does blur the background sometimes again he has a very varied set of styles though this one does remind me of uh, Craig Mullins right or it's kind of it's kind of hard to see the brush strokes it's pretty small at this point but you can still see the the playfulness, like it's not a full rendered illustration, but it's kind of fine enough, especially if you're kind of zoomed out, that it kind of feels complete, right? Right? Um, this, this one is, I think, a bunch of iterations in terms of, in terms of the color, I guess, or the lighting, or color theme, fuck. This one has a bit more in it, just because of the, the photo bashing of these folks in the center. Um, but the concept is essentially the same. I mean, look at the simplicity. Or shit, not simplicity, the... The directness of the painting approach. Reminds me a bit of Frank Hong. He has a bunch of videos where he does these um, um, environments, right? Um, I think Frank Hong is more focused on environments, I think. Um, and I think they have the same approach. I guess. Although, Leo Lee's a bit more, again, opacity-ish, right? And I think he likes to use the, the basic round brush in a lot of his work. Obviously with a bit of transparency or opacity, right? And it actually looks kind of cool, you know, the building up of, of the paint is it's very digital arty-ish. You know, it's not very... It has a specific vibe to it you know and um it's nice it, it, it really fits the digital approach just because of the, the the layering system right where you can kind of um layer things <laughs> right um i do like the fact that he did post like three versions of this specific um scene right i guess they're from three different worlds perhaps that's my guess but anyway oh shit it's a tutorial i think 
Um, it's on. Uh, I suggest you find this post on his art station, and so you can actually see his actual tutorial for this piece. Um, anyway, now this one's more of an illustration, very very defined, high quality, very very gritty, right? It's for a book, I guess. Amazing. I'm more focused on this kind of artwork just because it's very intense, right? And very, very epic looking. Um, let's proceed. Uh, ooh, there you go, right? And a lot of his work here is kind of um, under the, the bluish hue, right? It's not very saturated or full of life like... Like this one, you know, it's pretty kept, or it's kept kind of under one family, blue, and blue. <laughs> uh, but I do like the approach. I mean, you can see the the amount of detail in some parts, right? But the, it's just so direct, right? It's very very straight to the point. It kind of reminds me of the mentality of Heng Zhu, where you just kind of paint, um, directly, and it actually helps you to save time. And it does help build confidence, right? I mean, look at the hands here. Even the way the highlights were done, it's not super overly done. It's pretty minimal, but it just gets the right, like it gets the right spots enough for you to kind of hook your eyes in, right? Um, and obviously as you go further into the background, it does get a bit more simpler, makes sense. Because obviously these guys, this conversation right now is like the main thing. Um, the focus, I guess. I can see a bit of yellows here or yellow green. So there is a bit of hue variety. It's not just... Um, I'm guessing it's coming from some kind of light source here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this red orange thing is about or is. But... Um, even the way he does the faces, they're so well formed. It reminds me a bit of Gino. There's an artist, a Chinese, I think, artist named Gino. Gino, Gino. Um, and they have the same kind of approach, I guess. Very straight to the point. More on the um, narrative side, illustration side. Um, now, this is pretty epic. Way more colors here. Um, yellows, reds, blues. <laughs> it's pretty simple still, but, um, well, not simple, but in terms of the colors, yes, it's kind of, it's still not super intense. You know, it's pretty, the reds, the yellows, the blues are the kind of constant thing in his work, I guess, or in this specific kind of world, perhaps, most likely, I think. <laughs> and again, the brush variety, not so much. Um, I don't think he has a lot of, um, brushes to play with. I think he just likes to keep it simple so that the, 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 the detail in his work kind of compensates for that less brush variety. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fuck. Now, obviously, it does help to have, like, a lot of layers for a scene like this just because there's so much going on, right? Um... And he tends to go for these epic shots, or very stable epic shots. Um, where they feel more like actual, like classical paintings, right? They're not exactly keyframes. And they tend to be flat, right? Where the, the lines kind of go in a very horizontal kind of manner. Like very, very, it's a man's eye sometimes. It's just, what's the word for it? Fuck, it's just stable. Stable is the word. Not very dynamic, usually. He likes to keep it simple. I mean, this one's pretty dynamic, but um, for the most part, he likes to keep these kind of city scenes or town scenes very, very simple. And it kind of makes sense just because he has so much detail going on and it doesn't make sense to complicate things if it doesn't have to be that complicated, right? Same thing here. I love this kind of... Um, grass plant thing. <laughs> Fuck. 
Damn, look at those hands. Big sword. And um, it's not super clean. Like, a lot of his work isn't that, like, tight. I mean, it's just detailed, right? It's fairly impressionistic, I would say. Which I am a fan of, right? The approach. Ah, look at this. It's so quiet, simple. But the lighting is kind of... I think the lighting helps. Especially the way it touches this kind of roofing here, right? You can see a bit of reds and yellows. Very, very simple color palette, but... The composition, the detail kind of makes up for it, right? I love the mood. Very, very dark, quiet, right? Again, very, very epic-ish kind of um, composition here. I think someone is flying. <laughs> Beautiful armor design here. Very, very intricate, right? I mean, if you zoom in, it's going to feel very messy, but... You know, I, I, that's not the point. You know, you're supposed to see it from afar anyway, and in this view, it looks amazing, right? Um, and you can tell this guy, this guy, this guy is kind of the main thing. Or are the main things. Um, and you can tell it does get simpler in this box platform thing. You can see the big brown brush over here, right? Um, so there's this nice kind of separation. Not separation, but delineation. Fuck. <laughs> when it comes to the amount of detail. Um, so again, this is the 10 to 20% that needs to be... You know, or that needs to have a fair amount of detail, right? Amazing. Maybe he, I think he does add noise in the end of his paintings to add a bit of grit, and maybe he does sharpen it after adding some noise. That's just my guess. But, um, yeah. Look at the roofing here. Amazing. Fuck. <laughs> I love the effects here, the kind of blurry effects, right? And I guess because the composition, the colors, are kept simple. Because they're kept simple, I think he can he can focus more on the, the storytelling and the details, right? Same thing here. Again, blues, reds, yellows, same thing, right? Mostly on the bluish, cool side. Here we have a cool. Here we have some warms, right? Cool, warm, cool, warm. Um, oof, amazing. This one does have a bit more brush variety, I think. I don't see a lot of round brush. Maybe a bit being used, but it's a bit all over the place. But again, reds, blues, yellows. Those are his main families of hues. Um, and again, very, very impressionistic, but it's it gets the job done. Fuck, excuse me. Kind of reminds me a bit of a Yankee, a bit. Right? It's a bit opaque in this part right here. But, um, yeah. Now, this one's pretty dynamic. You're seeing it from above. So, this guy's um, kind of pulling his horse in. Now, this guy's kind of out of proportion. Like, the horse's head is way bigger. Right? Like, the, the entire horse is pretty big compared to this guy. But, um... Or maybe it's because its head is... Like, it's standing up? Fuck. Um, I do like the background. It, it has a lot of, like, chaos in it. Very, very impressionistic-ish. Which is totally my thing. Um, um, this one's more of a mech design, right? This one does remind me of one artist named Fuck. <laughs> he did a lot of uh, Predator fan art studies. Um, like, he has the same kind of style, I guess. Or color palette. He's more of a warmer dude. He's not into the whole cool. Like, he doesn't have a lot of blues in his work. Very, very reds. Or he has a lot of reds and browns in his work. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, let me just find him on my phone here because I guess it's more of his style like Leili's style is just I guess it's more of a more on the cooler side 
But maybe this is more of a project kind of thing. But, um... I have to remember his name. Oh my god. Sorry, let me just find his name. Although both their, their styles are pretty different, but... I don't know, I just feel like I need to know his name. Oh my god. You know what? I'm going to give up in three. Oh, it's Vlad Ganelli. Jeez, I think it's Romanian or something. Vlad Ganelli. Yeah. Because Vlad Ganelli has one piece um, where he does design some kind of sci-fi slash... It's a sci-fi concept with... It's kind of a mix between a creature and a mech. Um, and it has the same kind of design aesthetic, I guess. And the color palette is on the warmer side, so it kind of reminded me of Vlad Ganelli. Um, anyway... Ew, another dynamic shot, right? We have a bowman here, an archer. Again, on the bluish side. Now, this one does have a very different kind of feel to it. Same color palette as these ones, but it's less sharp, I think. Anyway. Now, he does have a video of this. It's kind of a nice... Um, um, it's a round brush challenge, you know? So I guess he's only limiting himself to just the round brush with some opacity. And it does look pretty nice, you know? And I think th this kind of painting approach really does help develop confidence. Um, and that's some Feng Zhu advice. You know, just be more direct. Limit yourself to like the background layer in Photoshop. Um, and just be more direct when painting. And uh, learn to paint over your mistakes. And use less like effects and shit so you can just uh, be more... Again, direct. And this will help develop that confidence. Um, in your 2D skills, right? And it doesn't look bad. You know, it's, it's obviously a sketch, but it gets the job done, you know, right? Reds, blues, yellows, same thing. Now, this is the last piece we're going to review in his work. Um, I think this is part of some kind of graphic novel, I think. The Legend of uh, Shendai, page 159. Um... He does use a flat brush in the beginning. And then he does go into detail a bit. Or a little more, I guess, in the armor. Um, it does get very, very, almost like watercolor-ish in the background environment. Um, maybe he does use some mixer brushes here and there to kind of blend things around. Especially in this area, but it's hard to say. Um, but yeah. So that's it for this art review of Leo Lee. I will link all of the the videos that I find interesting from his channel on YouTube. Um, this guy also has a Twitter and an Instagram, so you could check out you could check that out if you want. And obviously, he does have an art station, right? So follow him there if you can, if you want. Um, so yeah, keep training, keep painting, keep learning, and stay free.